Hi, I'm Tim Rudnick. I'm going to read one of my favorite chapters in Moby Dick called The Pacific, chapter 111. When gliding by the Banshee Isles, we emerged at last upon the great South Sea. Were it not for other things, I could have greeted my dear Pacific with uncounted thanks. For now, the long supplication of my youth was answered. That serene ocean rolled eastwards from me a thousand leagues of blue. There is one knows not what sweet mystery about this sea, whose gently awful stirring seems to speak of some hidden soul beneath, like those fabled undulations of the Ephesian sod over the buried evangelist St. John. And meet it is that over these sea pastures, wide rolling watery prairies and potter's fields of all four continents, the waves should rise and fall and ebb and flow unceasingly. For here, millions of mixed shades and shadows, drowned dreams, reveries, all that we call lives and souls lie dreaming, dreaming still, tossing like slumberers in their beds, the ever rolling waves made so by their restlessness. To any meditative major rover, the serene Pacific once beheld must ever after be the sea of his adoption. It rolls the midmost waters of the world, the Indian Ocean and Atlantic being but its arms. The same waves wash the moles of the new built California towns, but yesterday planted by the re recentest race of men and laid the faded but still gorgeous skirts of the Asiatic lands, older than Abraham. While all float, milky, well, all between float milky ways of coral isles and low-lying endless unknown archipelagos and impregnable Japans. Thus, this mysterious divine Pacific zones the world's whole bulk about, makes all coasts one bay to it, seems at the tide beating heart of the earth. Lifted by those eternal swells, your knees must own the seductive God, bowing your head to Pan. But few thoughts of Pan stirred Ahab's brain as standing like a statue in his accustomed place beside the muzzled rigging. With one nostril, he unthinkingly sniffed the sugary musk from the Banshee Islands, in whose sweet word, woods, woods mild lovers must be walking. And with the other consciously inhaled the salt breath of the newfound sea, that sea in which the hated white whale must even then be swimming. Launched at length upon these most final waters and gliding towards the Japanese cruising ground, the old man's purpose intensified itself. His firm lips met like lips of a vice. The delta of his forehead veins swelled like over, over laden brooks. In a very deep sleep, his ringing cry ran through the vaulted hull. Sternal! The white whale spouts thick blood.